Hi, and welcome to my channel. I've had a lot of comments and questions about the dimmer board that I have talked about in my book, uh, Design Guide for Scenery Lighting. And so today I'm going to take a walk through uh, assembling the board and testing it out so people have an easier time of putting it together. So stay tuned, we're going to get to it right now. Okay, let's talk about building the dimmer board. The first thing you're going to need is a soldering iron. should be a 60 watt soldering iron, 40 to 60 watts is okay. Uh, if you have an adjustable one, I set it to around 700 degrees and that's the temperature I kind of keep this at. should have a fine tip uh, and hopefully it should be regulated, temperature regulated. What are some of the other things you need? Well, let's look over here. First of all, these are all the parts that I have put together. You need the JST plugs or connectors, you need the DC power connector, you need the um, potentiometers, resistors, and of course the board. You also need some spacers. This is a half inch plywood spacer and this is a quarter inch spacer. This is made out of brass. It can be made out of wood too or plywood or whatever you have available. So you'll need that. You also need some tape. You'll need some needle nose pliers. You'll need some flush cutters like these. And that should be most of what you need. Also, you should have some experience on so in soldering. Uh, this shouldn't be your first project. Some of the holes are a little small. Um, if you have no experience in soldering, then the best thing to do is go onto YouTube and look at some of the soldering vi uh, videos that are up there on YouTube uh, and get some practice in doing the soldering. Uh, the other thing you will need is some alcohol and a brush. Something like this would be good. Uh, if you've been touching the board um, and you may have fingerprints on it, the first thing you should do is wash it with some alcohol. And that's really easy to do. You just take some alcohol and wash the board with it like this and let it dry. Okay? Or, like me, you can blow some air across. Just to clean off the board. Okay. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the JST connectors, which you see right here. And what I'm going to do is put each one in this orientation, like that. So I'm going to put all the rest of them, the other nine, right in a row, and then I'll show you what we're going to do with those. Okay, I have all the JST connectors lined up here now. The next thing I'm going to do is lay it on one of these spacers and take a piece of tape, and I'm going to tape them onto the board, like this. I'm going to turn it on the end so that the tape goes over the edge but not on the other side of the board because you're going to be soldering them to the other side of the board. And then I'm going to take two, or more, two, of the, um, two more of the connectors and put them up here for the daisy chaining connectors. Like that. And I'm going to do the same thing with the tape. Tape them on the board. Okay, now we're uh, almost ready to solder. I'm going to turn this upside down, like this. And I'm going to put a quarter inch spacer underneath it, so the board now is lying kind of flat. And now what I'm going to do is solder all these connections. Okay, that's all done. Now, one thing I should uh, mention, uh, it might make it a little easier if you put a weight on the back of the board while you're soldering. It just keeps it from slipping around a little bit, but I, I didn't do that. I don't have that. I don't think it's a big deal. It's not that much trouble. Um, okay, so let's see how we did. I Take the tape off. Okay, we have all the connectors now connected. Okay, let's, uh, let's do the next step. The next step is going to be to add the pots on. 
Now the only thing about the potentiometers is just make sure the screw that you see here it lines up with the white dot on the board and that's the orientation so that when you turn this pot clockwise it'll get brighter the, the light will get uh, the LED will get brighter so you just put that put those into the three holes and uh, I'm gonna do that now and then I'll show you what we're gonna do after that okay I'm all done so what I'm gonna do now is do the same thing as I did before I'm gonna put the tape across the potentiometers the pots to hold them on like that again don't go in the back of the board go on the front of the board and the side of the board the edge of the board okay now I've got those taped down I'm gonna turn them upside down and I'm going to use the um, uh, half inch board or the half inch spacer to solder them in. So you can put it on either side of the board, doesn't matter. And so now I'm going to solder those. Okay, <clears throat> what I found out was that the, uh, I, I used a, uh, a 3 8 inch spacer here, it worked a little bit better than the half inch um, spacer did, but it, it's because that these two connectors are in the way. You can pretty much use either one. If you want to use the half inch, you can do it like that and that'll hold it steady. So, um, I think either one is probably okay, but you get the idea. So now let's take off the tape. So far I've spent about 10 minutes doing this with all the camera work and everything. So now the next step is to put in the uh, resistors. So I'm going to install the resistors. I'll put one in and then I'll show you after they are all in. Um, like this. Oh, and one other thing, before I put the resistors in, I want to take these um, diagonal cutters, these um, uh, cutters, and cut off the excess wires on the back of the uh, pots, like that, just so they're out of the way. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put the uh, resistors in, I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, I cut off all of the uh, excess wires on the back of the pots, and actually you can cut off three at a time with this with this thing here. Uh, and then I'm going to inspect them, and I see I made see I made uh, one that's not quite a great uh, solder joint right here, and maybe one here. Just check them, and you see if there's any holes, there's empty space around the connections. You just tuck them up. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is uh, put the resistors in, the 680 ohm 1 watt resistors, and uh, I'm going to show you how to do that um, after I get them all in and what we're going to do next. Okay, what we're going to do on the in this side is uh, we're going to solder these resistors in from the top side. It's easier to do and uh, it'll hold just as well. So the best way to do this is Again, brace it up. I have a piece of uh, roll of masking tape here and the half inch spacer. And I'm just going to go down and do four or five at a time. And um, then I'm going to align them just so they look neat. It's just an aesthetic thing. Now, the thing you want to do here is make sure that the resistors are off the board. In other words, not touching the board. Uh, and that's for heat, uh, heat dissipation. They will cool a lot better, stay cooler if they're off the board. So I've just done about four and I'm just going to line them up to make it look a little neater and then I'm going to saw it, keep going down the line and, and solder them. You can solder one side at a time and then adjust the other side if it looks kind of haywire but um, in fact you can even move them while, they're, while you're soldering them to get in line. But again just make sure that they're off the board it's just good practice. It's probably not a big deal if they touch the board a little bit, but uh, I like to keep them off the board. Um, maybe an eighth of an inch. Okay, so that's that's one side. Now what I'm going to do is just align them so they look a little neater, straighten them out, 
so they look a little more uniform. And then I'm going to solder the other side. But I'll show you. I'll show you that after it's done. Okay, so this is what it looks like. The resistors are uh, all soldered in, more or less aligned. And now I'm going to cut the back, cut the leads off the back, just like I did with the pots. Okay, we're just about done here. I put in the 2K resistor, put in the LED, and what I'm going to use is the long nose pliers to spread the leads on the back so they stay in there while I solder them. And they don't fall out. Like that. Same with the LED. Noticing the polarity, the long lead goes to the plus sign here. Just spread those. And then the last thing is the power connector. I'm going to install that. And I'm going to bend those tabs of their leads over a little bit so they don't fall out while I'm trying to solder them. Like that. And then lay it down here and just solder it away. Okay. So now we're done. Now I'm just going to clip off these leads. Like that. And then what I'm going to do is, oops, uh, if you get something that's a little twisted, you don't like the size, you can always reheat it and just twist it a little bit like that. Okay, that looks good. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is take my brush and clean the entire board. The reason for that is you want to get the flux off it. Flux, flux can be corrosive, and there's flux in the solder. So I'm just going to brush the board both sides, clean it up, you don't have to drench it or uh, really soak it, just brush some of the alcohol on it. Alcohol I use is 91% isopropyl alcohol instead of 70%, it has less water in it. And then I'm just going to dry it off and now we're going to test it as soon as I can find my leads so I plugged it in to my voltage supply and nothing happens and the reason nothing happens is because I don't have an external switch hooked up to this so if I had an external switch you can see the light is on and then um, this is hooked up to uh, what about 18 volts right now so that's where the switch would go. Uh, it's not built for a, a particular onboard switch. It's for an external switch because uh, typically this is where the, the buildings are and the lights go and your switch is probably closer to the control panel. So that's it. Um, I can plug in uh, an LED, uh, a um, building here and I'll show you how, how it works. Uh, let me get one of those. Okay. I put a jumper across the switch contact so you can see it a little bit, uh, so it'll stay on a little bit better. And uh, I'm on channel 3 here, and I'm going to try to turn the pot. And it looks like it's at pretty much maximum now. So I'm going to turn it down. And I hope you can see this, but I'm going to turn down the... This is a 22 turn pot, so it's... A pretty fine adjustment so you can take it down to zero very easily you can see it getting starting to get dim there now I think I'm about halfway halfway down and now it's pretty much pretty much off and out and then you can adjust it whatever you want so that's pretty much it it took me around 20 minutes or so to 20-25 minutes maybe with all the camera work and stuff uh, to put this board together. It's pretty simple, pretty easy to assemble. Uh, if you got any questions or comments, uh, let me know in the comments below the description. 
And that's it. I hope this helps. I also have a three-page documentation package if you decide to buy the the uh, the boards. And don't forget, you can you can daisy chain them with these two connectors here, so you could have four or five boards connected together, and it'll get all its power from this one uh, connector here on the left, the power connector on the left. So you you don't need to supply power to every board. Um, so that's it. Uh, let me know if you have any uh, questions. And um, see you in the next video.